Hello, Jim Wades from the Morris Telegraph Club. The Morris Telegraph Club is an association of retired railroad and commercial telegraph operators, former telegraph industry employees, historians, and others with an interest in the history of telegraphy and telecommunications. Today, we're going to take a look at a self-winding clock, and we're going to talk a little bit about the standardization of time. Uh, this particular self-winding clock is being restored for the Ozaki County, Wisconsin Historical Society, and it's still a bit of a work in progress, but we're going to kind of discuss how these clocks operate and, of course, uh, their role in the standardization of time. Uh, today, we take the standardization of time uh, uh, pretty much for granted. Uh, accurate time is available everywhere. But in reality, before the development of the telegraph, standardized time was uh, quite a, a miraculous thing. Uh, it was impossible to standardize time before the invention of the telegraph. And it was largely the Western Union Telegraph Company that made standardized time possible in the United States. It's important to remember that standardized time made safe rail transportation possible. Uh, it was critical to the development of the radio and television broadcast industry. It was important to the development of the airline industry, uh, the operation of stock and commodities exchanges, and so forth. It was truly uh, revolutionary and had a profound impact on technology and industry in the United States. Uh, this is a self-winding clock. And uh, we're going to take a look at the inside and uh, give you a few insights into how it operates. It's basically a pendulum clock, as you can see. It operates just like any other pendulum clock, but it has two primary differences. Number one is it winds itself every hour. Uh, so that's done through the a rather innovative a motor that winds the clock every hour. Uh, so it's called, obviously, a self-winding clock. Second of all, it's designed to be calibrated hourly from a telegraphic impulse. The telegraphic impulse basically uh, ensures that the time is correct once an hour. And we'll show you a little bit more on how that operates. Uh, so uh, here again, basic pendulum clock with two big differences. Number one, it winds itself every hour. Number two, it is calibrated once an hour via the telegraph network. Uh, this is the F type movement, uh, which is used in this clock, and hopefully I have this in a position where you can see it. But uh, basically, uh, this is the winding motor right here mechanism, and these are the telegraph electromagnets that receive the uh, calibrating impulse via the local telegraph loop. Now, uh, there is a locking cam that only allows calibration to occur uh, uh, two minutes before and after the anticipated calibration time. So you have about a four minute window per hour during which calibration can occur. So as the minute hand advances toward the top of the hour, you can see the cam release. The electromagnetic, uh, electromagnets basically actuate uh, upon receiving the telegraph impulse, and these force the minute hand into its correct position. So you can see this linkage here forcing down on the, uh, on the gear, and this of course calibrates the clock once per hour. Uh, very uh, simple and straightforward process, really. So this is uh, essentially how it works. And of course, once you move on and this locks back in place, if there's an errant impulse due to maybe testing and regulating activity, uh, crossed wires, whatever the case might be, some type of error in the network, it can't calibrate the clock. So again, uh, very straightforward. It's got a specialized winding mechanism. And uh, then of course, the calibration process. Now in the background you can hear WWV radio, the National Bureau of Standards uh, time broadcast. And uh, about 40 seconds from now you will see the uh, minute hand kind of hesitate for a moment as a timing impulse is received at 58 minutes uh, past the hour. So we're about 25 seconds away. And again, observe the minute hand and you'll see uh, this particular uh, cam here release and then of course you'll see this force the minute hand into its correct position. I'll be quiet so you can hear the time signal in the background.
Okay, so that's the timing impulse. Now this clock, as originally obtained, as it was donated, it has some problems, uh, and uh, yeah, therefore uh, a lot of incompetent uh, uh, past repairs, and uh, it's required a lot of work to get it up and running properly. Uh, and of course, we have it calibrating here at 58 minutes past the hour, uh, and it works quite well like that. We'll maybe even leave it in that particular calibration position. Uh, so the, the clock works quite well now, and uh, a few more repairs to do on it, uh, but generally speaking, it'll be ready to run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, at the Ozaki County, uh, Wisconsin uh, Pioneer Village uh, in their restored railroad uh, depot. Uh, so in over here, just so you kind of know the, the other history behind this, is uh, these clocks, the winding motor, uh, operated on three volts. And typically there were two number six dry cells wired in series to provide the voltage for winding the clock every hour. In this particular case, uh, we're actually using two replica number six dry cells. The replica dry cell on the left uh, provides the necessary three volts. The replica dry cell here on the right actually contains a modern uh, quartz oscillator that generates the correct timing impulse once per hour. That is, it simulates the telegraph network. And uh, that's the idea here. But the mechanics of the clock, uh, the way in which it winds, the way the calibration process works, is all original, functions just as it did in the telegraph era. These clocks were once ubiquitous throughout the United States. They were everywhere in factories and office buildings and, again, radio and television broadcast studios. Um, pretty much anywhere you went, train stations. Um, etc. So they were very, very common. And uh, the Western Union Company provided the infrastructure uh, to wind these clocks for many, many years, up into the 1960s, at which time uh, this methodology was superseded by uh, a more advanced technologies like we see today. So this gives you some insights into the history of the self-winding clock. And uh, I guess with that, we'll let you go, and thank you very much for the opportunity to show you this history of the telegraph industry and time.